Okay, so chapter six, day one. Here's the video. We're going to focus on what is standard deviation and how do we use it as a ruler for measuring data. Now, we watched a video on standard deviation. We took down this note last time that standard deviation is the average distance the data is away from the mean, and it's a measurement of the spread of the data. We got that down last time. What we're going to talk about more specifically is how do we use it as a ruler. Um, in the video, you saw the definition of a density curve. A density curve is a curve with area one under it. So I don't care what kind of shape the curve takes on, the area under that curve has an area of one. So it might look like a trapezoid. It might look like, I don't know what that is. It might look like a normal curve. But the area under it is one. And so that's a vocabulary word that occurs to us on multiple choice parts of the test in which they might say, which of the following is a density curve? And then you just have to figure out which one has area one under it. But a special kind of density curve that we're going to work with, which you worked with in Algebra 2 trig, is called the normal curve. It's a density curve that takes on this very special mound shape. And the area under it is always one. Now, because normal curves take on that general shape, we have some generalization in terms of how they behave and how much data is within certain regions. And in Algebra 2 trig, you use something that was close to this. And in AP Stats, we call this the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Some people call it the empirical rule. Um, it's just another name for it. And we saw on the video, what does that mean? It means if this is the mean, I am zero standard deviations away from the mean, all right? As I go up and down one standard deviation, 68% of the data fall between down one and up one, or within one standard deviation is 68% of, of the data. General rule of thumb. It doesn't mean it's 100% exact, but if a setting follows a normal curve, in general, that's what it does. 95% of the data should fall within two standard deviations. All right, so 95%, that's a lot of the data. I mean, that's almost everybody. Just you're, you have 5% left over um, that is not include. And then 99.7, I mean, that's really everyone except for three tenths of a percent. So that should fall within three standard deviations. So again, this standard deviation in general is where the curve stops getting steeper, starts to shallow out. You just kind of eyeball it and put a vertical line here. And then whatever you went over, you do it again and do it again. And that's one, two, three, one, two, three. It's not perfectly drawn to scale, but you just lay out one, two, three in each way, and that will lay out the normal curve for us. Now, how much falls in between each of these is also useful to know. In Algebra 2 Trig, they gave you a chart. In AP Stats, there's no chart. So you just kind of have to figure out the numbers on your own a little bit. So if this is 68 split evenly, then this would be 34%, 34%, 34, 34, 68. Now, if I didn't want to work in percentages, I could work in decimals, 0 0.34, 0 0.34, because all of it would add up to be 1. All right, or 100%, whether you're working percentages or decimals. Now, this is 95. Well, 95 take away 68 is about 27. And half of 27 is 13.5. So 13.5%, 13.5%. And so much is in each of these little regions. Okay, well, 95 to 99.7, there is about two, about 4.7 percent, 4.7, well, which is about 2.35 percent, 2.35 percent in each side. 
And then anything beyond 99.7 is about 0.15 of a percent each way. Now, the chart that you had in Algebra 2 Trig cut these into half deviations. You don't need to. For a general rule of thumb, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, down 1, down 2, down 3 in each direction, and this will work for us. So if I said what percent of the data is above 1, you just add up this percentage. If I said what percent of the data is below 1, you can add up all of these percentages. If I said what percent of the data is between negative 2 and 0, you would add up these percentages. So you just use this chart, and they will tell you where the numbers are, and then you have to find the percent that falls within those numbers. That's what you had to do in Algebra 2 trig. So in class, we're going to use our class height data, and we will answer some questions about that. But that's it. Um, that's the empirical rule, or what we call the 68.95.99.7 rule for the way data should behave. Okay? <clears throat>